I'm Hans Kalert for Precision Aerobatics, and this is PA Builds. Besides the servos themselves, these are examples of the parts we'll need to locate to build up our linkages. You'll also need red Loctite, nail clippers, epoxy, a mild solvent like denatured alcohol to clean the surfaces, and a needle file or other tool to exactly enlarge the holes in our carbon fiber pieces. It's important to note that all of the carbon fiber pieces supplied with holes are purposefully undersized from PA. Because everything must fit together with zero player slop, you will need to accurately enlarge the holes yourselves. Take your time, make small adjustments. These bolts should perfectly pass through the carbon fiber arms or holes without any slop. But first we need to install our servos. And to do this, we should start by discarding the hardware that was supplied with them. The rubber grommet arrangement just permits too much flex under the load, so our servos will be hard mounted into the fuselage. Now typically the screws that are provided aren't fully threaded anyways, so these are useless to us. You'll need to source your own hardware. I like to use the type of screws that are fully threaded and have washers formed into the head. We start by test fitting the servo into the bay. If it doesn't just drop right in, you may choose to either snip off the strain relief rubber around the servo wires or carefully open up the bay with a file. Once the servo fits, we'll make our future screw locations with a pin vise while we hold the servo in place. For my screws, I'm using a 1.5mm drill bit. So here we want to accurately drill two holes for the screws, and there's no need to fasten the servo around all four corners if it can be. Two is all we need. Next, take out the servo screws and carefully thread them into the holes. Work the screws one turn in and a quarter turn out to clear the threads and then remove the screw. Apply a few drops of thin CA into the threaded holes, giving it time to cure and stiffen the wood. We can now route the servo wires and finally install the servo. You should find that the threads need to be recut now using the same one turn in, one quarter out method. Next up is the building of the servo control arms. You should have purchased separately from your kit the appropriate carbon fiber servo arm extensions. Now these are important because they assure proper mechanical advantage and geometry along our flight control surfaces. Start by centering your servo. Do this with your radio system on and verify that the channel it's plugged into doesn't have any trim or sub trim programmed. You can also use a servo tester to get a true center. Just beware the really inexpensive ones online really aren't that accurate. Paying attention to which side of the servo the manual says the arm will point, we must now find and choose a control arm that positions the arm itself as close to 90 degrees to the servo case as possible. Once you've chosen the side of an arm, snip off the other sides. This is the first real step to getting the linkage as close to mechanically perfect as possible. The result is minimal or no sub trim and maximum and equal control throws in both directions. There will always be an opportunity for manufacturing variations in servos, however, and it may not exactly be 90 degrees at true neutral. That's what sub trim is for. We just want to keep it to a minimum. You can turn off power to the servo now, but be careful not to bump it away from its center. If your arms have a casting on their top size, as the high techs do, you'll need to remove it so the carbon fiber arm extensions can sit flat on them. You can now fix the extension arm with a tiny supplied screw. The hole for this screw does not need to be enlarged, and it should align with the hole in the nylon or plastic arm. Now adjust the diameter of the hole for the servo output shaft screw. Remember, don't oversize it. With a nail clipper, sniff off and smooth the excess from the top of the ball link. Now gather the links and clevises. We should clean them from any manufacturing residue in the areas where the carbon fiber rods will be epoxy to them. I like to soak mine in a little pool of denatured alcohol, and then I carefully try to wipe them out with the end of a paper towel, or possibly even a toothpick, making sure I've left nothing behind inside of them. We can then set the clevises aside again to dry, and focus on making the hole in the carbon fiber arm extensions the same diameter as a supplied bolt that will hold it on. When you have it perfect, the order of assembly here is bolt, ball link, carbon fiber arm, nut then follow it off with a dab of Loctite, and if you have it, a drop of lubrication on the ball itself. Pay attention to the orientation of the ball link on the arm. Typically it's on the bottom or the inside, but you should consult the manual 
and now attach the completed arm to the servo. We're now ready to prepare and attach the control horns to be glued into the fuselage. They may appear a lot alike at first, so take an extra moment to lay them out and set them aside to avoid a permanent mix-up. Also important is that any carbon fiber area that receives epoxy should be slightly roughened up with either a file or sandpaper. The right amount of sanding is when the sheen is removed from the carbon fiber. Then wipe off any excess dust with some denatured alcohol. Next, let's take our control surface and delicately cut or melt the covering away from the hole in the control horn. If you're using a knife, don't slice into the wood here. If you choose, it's okay to cut an extra amount of covering away here, and I have shown about one millimeter of wood around where the horn will sit. We'll leave just enough epoxy on the horn when we're finished to cover this, and it provides a little extra strength in this area. You need to fully test fit the horn in the slot. The shoulders of the horn should sit on the model surface and it should be 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface. The fit here should be very close, sized just right that when it's inserted it won't wipe away all of the epoxy from the joint's interior, so it may need some adjustment here. Remove the horn and attach the clevises after adjusting the hole for these bolts to pass through. Do not over tighten this bolt as it will pinch the forks onto the horn which will cause binding. The clevises should swing freely, but not sloppily. Add a dab of Loctite to the back side of the screw, but avoid getting it onto the carbon fiber where it could harden and also cause binding. Now we need to mix up some of our epoxy and install the control horns. I like to take the blade of an old hobby knife or a toothpick and work some epoxy into the wood fibers on the inside of the slot before I install the horn. This is called wetting out, and it does increase the bond strength, so I suggest you do it. Again, make sure that you have the right horn here for the area and that it's fully seated with a hole facing towards the nose of the airplane. Leave just enough epoxy to provide a strengthening fillet at the base of the horn and if needed, tape the horn in place at 90 degrees to the surface. Now it's very important that you set this all aside and allow it to completely dry before proceeding with building the linkages. When it's ready, you'll need to identify the correct carbon fiber rod for the area you're working on. Note that the rods are slightly longer than they need to be on purpose. At this point, I recommend you securely tape your control surfaces in the neutral position and test fit the carbon fiber linkage rod. Insert the rod into the clevis and move the servo arm to the 90 degree position. When you have the amount measured that you need to remove, I found that the best way to cut a carbon fiber rod without mushrooming the end is simply to roll it beneath a sharp hobby blade. Once a line is scored, it can easily be continued to cut through with a knife or snipped off with a small pair of sharp side cutters. Also, a multi-tool is acceptable. Double check your cut by reinserting it and testing the fit. It's better to cut the rod a millimeter or two short rather than leaving it too long. The geometry of these linkages is critical. Then lightly scuff the carbon fiber rod where the epoxy will bond and clean it with denatured alcohol. Go ahead and mix up your epoxy and then protect the covering below the glue joints with some tape. Use a toothpick or the rod itself to work the epoxy completely into the clevises and balling cavities. Roll the carbon fiber rod around in its new location and adjust the ball length so that it's centered and parallel to the arm. We should have a little bit of epoxy that has squeezed out and this can be teased against gravity so that it cures and creates a nice little fillet around the exterior of the joint as well. Once it begins to stiffen up however, set the wing aside and make sure that everything is centered then let it completely cure you've just made a super strong and ultra precise lightweight linkage that should require minimum trimming, if any. For models such as the Ultimate AMR, Z-Bend linkages are used. The arm extensions build the same way, and half of this linkage has been made for you at the factory. We can get started by prepping the other half. I recommend you start by roughening up the carbon fiber rod end and the wire where they will be joined. This will ensure the strongest possible linkage. Next, we slide the long piece of heat shrink on down the rod, followed by the two smaller pieces, leaving them towards the end. Insert the Z-Bend against the rod under the guidance of the two small pieces and shrink them down. This will keep the linkage securely in place so we can set the length. The sharp ends of the Z-Bend can be used in a drilling motion to make the perfect sized hole for this setup. Tape your surfaces in a neutral position and install the link on either side that you prefer to work on, making sure to properly orient the Z-Bends on the control horns and arms according to the manual. Those adjustments can now be made to the wire length after centering the servo to 90 degrees to the case. 
When you're ready, I found that a single drop of CA can be used to spot tack the wire to the rod. Gently remove the assembly and clamp it off of the work surface. Now wrap the supplied Kevlar string snugly around the Z-bend and the rod in tight coils front to back, making sure to lock off the starting end under a coil. When you're done, soak it all in thin CA and slide the long heat shrink tube in place. Then you can shrink it down with heat and snip any dried excess line away. After you're sure it's completely dried and cooled down, you should pull the linkages fairly hard with your hands to test that they are solid. The last little bit of advice here is to support the joint and be as gentle as possible whenever you're inserting a Z-bend wire into place. Bluntly forcing it into a tight fitting hole and twisting it around the bend could easily weaken or break the joint without it being apparent. Again, here we have a super strong and excellent control linkage setup that's ready for action.